Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Chancellor of the University of California, Berkeley, Robert Bergino. This is great. <laughs> so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Robert Bergino, uh, both a professor of physics and material science and engineering, and also chancellor here at UC Berkeley. I have the great privilege to welcome all of you today on this very special occasion to hear His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, head and spiritual leader of the Tibetan people. His Holiness has twice before visited our campus, in 1994 and 1997. His Holiness is here today through the sponsorship of the American Himalayan Foundation and the Richard C. Blum Center for Developing Economies. The foundation of which Richard Blum is founder and chair provides healthcare, education, and environmental and cultural preservation throughout the Himalayan region. The center, located here on the Berkeley campus, is devoted to research and education for the alleviation of global poverty. It is training the next generation of global leaders to make lasting change for the poor. His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, has often spoken of the suffering of poverty as a global issue that must be addressed from the oneness of humanity. His Holiness's contributions to social justice, human rights, environmental protection, and peace have been recognized across the globe, including with the Nobel Peace Prize. Today, His Holiness will address us on peace through compassion. I would first like to invite Sharon Stone to the stage. Many of you will know Sharon Stone as an accomplished, and in the ride here, we're trying to get the right noun to describe Sharon. Should it be actress, actor, or activist? And so Sharon said I should introduce her as an accomplished actor of Vist, <laughs> who is a Golden Globe and Emmy Award winner and an Academy Award nominee. She's also a friend of the American Himalayan Foundation and member of its board of directors and has been active in many worthy causes. She is a friend of Tibet and of the Dalai Lama, Sharon. Hey, good afternoon. How are you? I said in the car over that I hoped His Holiness would go, hello, Berkeley. <laughs> so I will. Hello, Berkeley. Um, it's just wonderful to be here in this beautiful open air theater today on this glorious, glorious day for such a wonderful uh, and great opportunity. Um, wow. Um, it's a great feeling. Uh, and we're here at a time when the world is full of so many different uh, emotions and thoughts and feelings and changing times, changing opinions and assignments of thoughts, feelings, emotions. And when we're told that there is a structure of feelings, emotions, and changing tides. 
In fact, we're told that we're in a time of scarcity. But if we look to our genuine selves, our genuine truths, and depart from the illusions of that which is put upon us to that which is within us. Of course, we know that there is never a scarcity, but that there is a wealth of greatness and that within us there is much. For every one of us has a dream. Every one of us has a destiny. Every one of us has a giant opportunity. It is upon us to follow our destiny and to fulfill that dream. It's our choice with how much integrity we meet that destiny. There's a giant puzzle in the world, and it is ours to take our piece and fulfill that particular piece of the puzzle and glorify the destiny of the universe. I'm sure each of you sitting here has some beginnings of the understanding of what your dream is. And that's why you've come here today. It's the compassion within your heart that you're reaching out in the hopes that you can simply let go and end that bit of fear that is restraining you from the power of your generosity and wholeness to fulfill yourself as a world citizen. Because we're no longer individuals, no matter what you do, you're no longer an individual alone in your tiny space. We now know for certain that we're world citizens walking together hand in hand to fulfill our destiny as one. And the day is upon us. So I welcome you, UC Berkeley community, friends of the American Himalayan Foundation. Exactly. In particular, the students at the Bloom Center for Developing Economics. And it's a great pleasure to ask Chancellor Bergenau to present something very special to my friend, your Regent of Berkeley alum, and passionate friend to the Tibetan people, Richard Bloom. And before I go, I have one thing I'd like to say. Go Bears. Before I start my next remarks, His Holiness said he couldn't wait. He wants to see all of you, so he's about to come out.
That's the No. No. You already spoke. Have you already spoken? As Sharon just indicated, I now have a uh, very pleasant task to perform. The University of California does not confer honorary degrees. In 1981, the Berkeley Medal was established as the university's top honor. It is bestowed on individuals of exceptionally distinguished achievements whose work and contributions to society illustrate the ideals of the university and contribute to its goals and whose careers have manifestly benefited the public. A few years ago, while I was president of the University of Toronto, I had the privilege of awarding an honorary doctorate to His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, and hope to do the equivalent here and to my chagrin, discovered that he has already received the Berkeley Medal <laughs> back in 1994. <laughs> However, there is a second person here who's also highly deserving of this recognition. Uh, and those of you will know just in the last month, I've had the singular privilege of bestowing the Berkeley Medal on both the president of Liberia President Johnson Sirleaf, a very inspiring woman. And just two days ago, at the dedication of the Blum Center, I was able to present, a privilege to present the Berkeley Medal to a person who twice, with one of my worst public Freudian slips ever, referred to as President Gore. Or <laughs> and that's because in year 2000. <laughs> and I didn't wake up until January 20th, 2009. <laughs> so I now, however, have the privilege of presenting the Berkeley Medal to another great personage, none other than Richard C. Blum. Ah. Richard, won't you please come forward? I have to say some nice things about you. Uh, listen carefully. So I have a very good string. Jimmy Carter, Johnson Surley, Al Gore, and now Richard Blum. You elevate the company, Richard. Richard Blum is a man deeply committed to alleviating human suffering who regards the Himalayas as his spiritual home. We can offer him no greater honor than to award him the Berkeley Medal at this very special occasion in the presence of his dear friend, His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Richard Blum has long had philanthropic interests primarily focused on global poverty and education. 25 years ago, he founded the American Himalaya Foundation, which provides services to 25,000 people every year throughout the Himalayas. Its projects are focused on building schools, training doctors, funding hospitals, taking care of children and elderly, and restoring sacred sites. Richard's support extends to projects in Africa with the Carter Center, the Global Poverty Center at the Brookings Institution, and efforts here in San Francisco, his hometown. 
Richard's vision for addressing poverty is practical and engaged. He has been the vision and driving force behind the Blum Center for Developing Economies, all the Blum Center participants out there, uh, which in three short years has become a remarkable success. His philanthropy has funded the establishment of the center and is now funding a new home on campus for the center in a refurbished naval architecture building. The center has been a resounding success. Over 1,500 students and 50 faculty members have participated in its programs. Students have been sent to 25 countries to participate in field work to alleviate poverty. The minor in global poverty and practice is the fastest growing minor on campus. Richard's vision, generosity, and confidence in what our students and faculty can achieve for the world has already had an indelible effect. Let me quote from one of our students, undoubtedly one of the ones sitting out there. The Blum Center gave me and countless students the opportunity to gain the knowledge and experience necessary to serve as responsible global citizens. By investing in us, you are developing the next generation of leaders who share your passion for creating a world free of poverty. We are especially proud that Richard is a Berkeley alumnus. I won't give the years, but go Bears. <laughs> He's currently chair of the UC Board of Regents. He is an exemplar who has passed on, passed on Berkeley's tradition of public service to our future generation of students. It's now, therefore, My very great pleasure to, to, to bestow the Berkeley Medal, the university's top honor on Richard C. Blum in recognition of his outstanding achievements in, in the public interest. His contributions to society illustrate the public service ideals to which Berkeley aspires. I now invite Richard to step to the podium. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. I, I wonder uh, where the funding came for this. It's, it's pretty nice. <laughs> the budget cuts promise. It's not from tuition increases. <laughs> At any rate, uh, I, I have been coming here really since I was 17 years old, a couple of weeks ago. And um, this is really a great day because it's a merger of the two things I probably care the most about, which is the University of California and the Tibetan people and their plight um, and what they stand for and what they represent and what their values can um, mean to the rest of us. Um, look, none of this is not done by any one individual and I want to thank Chancellor Bergeno for his leadership and his desire to move the center ahead. Without him, it wouldn't have happened. And I'd want to ask Shankar Sastri to please stand. Shankar and Ananya Roy. I got, I got two more, Marianne McCormick and Erica Stone. Shankar, while he's running this little school of engineering with 5,000 students, you wouldn't know because he seems to spend endless hours almost daily on our center as being the key dean. We have um, a multidiscipline group of something like nine deans. And yes, they can work together. And yes, things can move rapidly. This center has greatly exceeded my expectations. And Ananya Roy is, I think so many of you know, um, and we want actually 
the Blum Center students, a shout out for you and for your leader, Ananya. So. And Erica, wherever she is, is our leader. Um, and we now have 175. She describes herself as Sharon Stone's younger sister. Um, <laughs> any rate, uh, <laughs> that, uh, you know, we wouldn't um, be having these projects if it wasn't for them. And Bruce Moore is around here somewhere, is in from Kathmandu, who runs a lot of the projects firsthand. Um, his Holiness is being exceedingly kind and because he's on a short trip to the United States and he has visited two campuses. We were at UC Santa Barbara uh, where they had sell out crowds just as we did uh, two lectures yesterday, a lunch, uh, and he's suffering a little bit from the flu, uh, but nonetheless has carried on and um, I'm sure he will be inspirational in what he has to say. Um, but let me just say a few things about this. It is exactly 30 years ago that His Holiness first came to the United States. My wife, Diane Feinstein, and, and that's okay. <laughs> and and uh, thank you. I'll let her know you, you care. Uh, <laughs> went to see His Holiness in, uh, in 1978, and he came here for the first time uh, when she was mayor six months later in 1979. 30 years ago this month, 15 years ago this month, His Holiness last spoke in this theater, at the Greek theater. So thank you, Your Holiness, for your long friendship. Um, it, let me just say a few things about that. Um, it, it's uh, the interest that I developed when you sat and met Tibetans for the first time, that, that the spirituality and the kindness that they have is really rather unique. And I think this is the, another reason that we need to help them learn about their culture and preserve all this. Um, I had an interest in His Holiness from the time we were both small children. Um, and in fact, uh, we were born, uh, I, shall we say it this way, we were uh, reincarnated together within uh, the same month. And I want to pass it off as 1955, but <laughs> it was actually earlier. And, and the one thing we do know about His Holiness that in his last life, he was the 13th Dalai Lama, and the 13th Dalai Lama was a wonderful human being, and so his reincarnation, of course, is more of the same. What we don't know is what I was in my last life, <laughs> and clearly there must have been a problem because I was reincarnated as an investment banker. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been trying to make up for it ever since then. Um, let me just say one thing about the relationship with, or lack thereof, with the Chinese before I introduce His Holiness. Um, my wife I, and I and many others have tried to establish a sensible dialogue with the Chinese leadership, and we've known particularly Jiang Zemin and his people for a long time. And um, it's not because of anything the Tibetans have done that there hasn't been some kind of an accommodation. And I would just leave you with this. One, oppression is never a final solution. Lies don't live forever. And whatever else they say, in 52 years, they have been unwilling to meet with His Holiness. Their answer to that is, well, we don't really trust them. Oh, but they'll meet with Kim Jong-il, they'll meet with Mugabe, they'll meet with every other dictator around. It's time that the Chinese leadership, if they want to become a great nation, they also need to become a moral nation. And what goes on in Tibet is just immoral. In any event,
One of the great centers of interest in Tibetan studies is here at Berkeley. And so it's an honor to have our leader uh, to speak to us today. So thank you, Your Holiness. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. For this. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You want to I'll, I'll lend it to you. Oh, you have already. Dare <laughs> Oh. Do you prefer I speak from here or from there? From here. Okay. Mm. In the sh so in the sheet, a little bit cold. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you all here, because of sun, because sun. sun burning way. Burning, Okay. <laughs> now comfortable. Very good. But don't worry. I'm not going to I say, silent meditation here. <laughs> I will talk. <laughs> and respect to the Chancellor. Marbe. And my long time friend, Richard Gum. And I think professors, teachers, and particularly young students, and some other brothers, sisters. Indeed, I am very, very uh, happy and great honor uh, this opportunity uh, speak with a large number of people once more in the same place. Uh, so the place is same, but people I think many of, many of you, I think, are new people. And particularly, the world, our planet, year by year, changing. Uh, now we are in 21st century. Uh, the beginning of this 21st century, not a very happy one. Uh, but however, the major portion of this century yet to go. So now, my generation, perhaps including Chancellor and Richard also, our, our generation belongs to 20th century. Uh, now we are ready to say 21st century uh, eventually goodbye. <laughs> bye bye. So now here, young, bright generation. You are the real sort of the, sort of the people who really belongs this century. Now remaining of this century, whether it should be heavy one or 
something dropped one in your head. So therefore, uh, you are the source of hope. The time always moving, never stand still. In fact, no force stop moving time. So what we can do is whether time utilized for meaningful, constructive or time waste and worst case, destructive way. That's up to you, up to us. So now, in order to utilize time, meaningful, meaningful way, constructive way, I think firstly, uh, our action should be realistic action. In order to follow or implement realistic approach, we should know the reality. Now here problem is, there is always gap, appearance and reality. Uh, so we need fuller knowledge about the reality. Now here I have the impression and also some of my friend also uh, share the same, same view. Uh, the reality, as I mentioned earlier, things are rapidly changing. But uh, appearance, appearance in our mind more or less is the same. So our perception, in perception, still we carry old way of thinking. So the reality much changed. So that causing sometimes confusion and sometimes taking the unrealistic approach. I think recent sort of event, Iraqi crisis, Afghanistan crisis. From was the, the former president, Mr. Bush. I love him as a human being. Very nice person. <laughs> oh, really? He's a very straightforward. And uh, what's the day? I feel some good quality of human being. Not like a great leader or politician. He's, uh, he, he treated the, I mean, his friend just like another human being. That I love. That's very good. Of course, some of his policy is concerned. In fact, one occasion when I met, I told him, I love you, but some of your decisions, uh, decisive sort of policy, uh, I have some reservation. <laughs> I told him, <laughs> so like that. So in any way, I think the, some of his policy, and also I think due to his advice, sort of advice, I think very much based on their subject, sort of. Perception. Uh, perception. Uh, perception. Without knowing the reality. So then, you see, things start, implement, certain policies start. Then find a lot of unexpected sort of obstacles because of lack of fuller knowledge about the reality. So, and even though United States, since 
our childhood, my childhood, uh, even in Tibet, very far, you see, we always refer America, champion of democracy, liberty, freedom. So, the, generally speaking, the leadership carrying their sort of policy according to this principle. But sometimes, in spite of sincere motivation and a positive goal, but method, not sort of realistic method, so sometimes this create a problem. So therefore, we need fuller sort of awareness, fuller knowledge no. or understanding about the reality. Now, in order to look, in order to see the reality, the reality is not is it, something uh, now, now any event, whether positive or negative, or happy one or unhappy one, any event. And the reality, uh, not just one single sort of event, but much complex related with many factors. And then also, the not only present sort of, or say the complex situation, not only that, but also you see, today's event due to uh, past decade or past century, uh, all related. So therefore, we need, in order to know the reality, we need more holistic way to look. Uh, that's, I think, very, very important. And with full understanding, things are not that simple. Everything interdependent, interconnected. Then, uh, knowing that and our approach also, the more holistic way, that's, I think, very, very important. Now my topic here, Peace through, through compassion. Uh, perhaps some people may get the impression now talking something uh, religion, religion or holy thing. Uh, may, people may feel, oh, naturally, uh, from a uh, supposed uh, holy person, so these holy uh, the things, values. <laughs> the holy values. values. Oh, so now here, yeah, when I say compassion, uh, of course, all major religious tradition is the emphasis, the importance of compassion and loving kindness, and with that, uh, the spirit of forgiveness, tolerance, uh, these things, all major religious tradition, you see, carry this message and all major religious tradition teach us uh, these points, these values. But here, when I use compassion, here means more universal value, irrespective whether r religious people or non-religious non non -religious people. Even the certain things which even animal also appreciate. That kind of sort of universal value. So now, compassion here, some kind of genuine sense of concern for others' well being. And out of wishing, they also should, should feel happy. So now here, uh, uh, actually that kind of sort of desire, be happy, other, you see, that desire, uh, there are two levels of compassion, two levels of love, loving kindness. One level, mainly 
biological factor. Now, for example, the every mammals, uh, their mother always show genuine sort of sense of concern and maximum care about their offspring. Like birds, I think most of the birds and uh, most of the mammals. Uh, But those uh, certain sort of, uh, sort of uh, what say the species of animals. Say, uh, animals. animals, like turtle, some turtle, I don't know, all turtle, I don't know, some turtle. <laughs> I notice the mother lay down egg, then mother left, never meeting her offspring. So the young turtle themselves have to manage their survival. So since nature created that way, I don't think if we put together the offspring and their mother together, I don't think the either side showing affection. So no need, others care. Then some, like but, butterfly, right, butterfly. Uh, I don't think, see, they also have this capacity to show affection. I think almost like, I think, them, by nature, you see, female butterfly is mating with the male, then lay down the egg, then finish. Never meeting. Then their offspring, tiny one, no. Tiny worm, worm, or what do I say? Caterpillar. Caterpillar. Mm. Few moments, uh, I think a few days, small egg. Then uh, after hatching, uh, a few weeks, remain like caterpillar. Oh, here you see, I, since my, my childhood, I always afraid caterpillar. <laughs> so they, uh, scorpion survey. Scorpion, right? scorpion. Or frogs or scorpion, I don't, I don't I'm afraid. afraid. <laughs> I can touch. <laughs> but caterpillar, never. <laughs> so I want to tell uh, Blum, Richard Blum, my previous reincarnation may be caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know, really, I don't know. You see, that's... Mm. So, you see, these are the sort of nature, nature way. Cycle. Life cycle. Life cycle. Mm. So, then we human beings belongs the other category. Our survival entirely depend on uh, others' care. Others care. care. So now here, you see, genuine caring in order to sort of, what is it? Take place. Uh, taking that Take place. care. No, they emotionally, there must be some emotion which bring that energy. Now one time, my flight, I think Tokyo to America or somewhere, or between Euro or in, uh, India, I think, now no, 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 I can't remember. One occasion I noticed uh, 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 in, in business class, usually I go in business class, uh, the, I think first class is too much luxury. Uh, <laughs> and particularly, you see, we as a Buddhist monk, you see, never sort of drink. So, Alcohol. so there's not much, not much differences. <laughs> so the, the, the business class, I noticed one couple, quite young, still I think maybe 20, maybe around early, 30. Early 30s. Huh? Uh, wife and, and father with two children. One, I think, 
six, seven years old. One quite young. Quite small. Yeah. Quite small. Uh, then uh, they were say the long, the long flight. night flight. Long flight. So the afternoon or evening or afternoon, uh, the both taking a parent and the, I mean both parents is taking care of the two young children. Then eventually the elder one eventually slept. The young one still you see, sometimes crying, sometimes you see, try to move here to there. And I think two, three hours, the father also, you see, taking care as mother do. Then after three, four hours, father just asleep. <laughs> no longer any botheration. But the mother, till next morning, whole night, you see, carrying that young child. Uh, the young child. And then the ne next morning, the mother's eye become very red. And very sort of clear sign, complete exhaustion. Exhausted. Here, this is the indication. Female, mother, have sort of much sort of the determination to take care and willingness to sacrifice her own Vasudeva. Well-being, yeah. Well-being. Well-being, like that. So birds also like that. When I was in, in Lhasa, uh, you see some birds, I think some kind of duck, you see they, uh, spring, springtime, because of the, the young, young one, you see, come. So usually, uh, without taking care, then some dogs, also some eagles and crow, crow. you see, taking their sort of young. So they, uh, I asked some concerned people, please collect these young, young one, and brought to Nobel, bring to Nobelinga and kept there. Then eventually they grown up, they will fly. So that, at that time, I noticed the father, say, uh, although following the, the sort of young yeah, one, but flying, mother from Patala up to Nobulinga, almost walking, just Kasuri. next to them, Ka. next to the chick, little oh, chickens, like that. So they. Uh, so, so they are, these are the biological factors. It needs that. Uh, so that, that level of loving kindness or karata, compassion. Uh, compassion is biological factor limited and much mixed with attachment. That take as a seed. Then utilize human intelligence uh, and training, awareness. How much useful about loving kindness. Then uh, that seed can further develop. Then second level, develop to second level, compassion compassion, then unbiased, infinite. That now beyond the biological factor. So, now I believe when I say compassion is that level, that not take for granted, but through training. Training does not mean meditation. But simply utilize our intelligence. Because of faculty survey. Intelligence faculty. Uh -huh. That I think, you see, we can develop. Now here, peace. Through compassion. Through 
through compassion. Now, peace means, let's say, give opportunity or provide all growing. We living being, even I think trees, although they have supposed to no mind, but even they like uh, water come, at the time rain come, they become fresh. Sunshine, they become more fresh, like that. So they appreciate life. Uh, life. Uh, we, uh, life with mind, even more. If you want, survive. War means destruction, killing, finishing. I think in human mind, and also some birds, at the spring, everything fresh. So, so our mind also more fresh. Autumn, one leaf, leaf fall down and become bare, bare and sorry. The trees become bare. Oh. So sometimes we feel little, compared to the feeling or mood at the spring. spring. Uh, it is a little, uh, I say. Down. Ka. Down. Ka. Down. Feeling down. 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 I don't know. <laughs> now, sorry. Uh, I become uh, older. My English also become older. <laughs> so, is it difficult? Hmm? So, now here. Uh, uh, so, everybody, including animals, want peace. It's clear. And now one encouraging thing is, like uh, about Iraqi crisis happened, how many people, millions of people, from Australia up to the United States, showing their sort of spirit of against war. So I think desire for peace is really now very, very kind of strong. In American continent, in the European continent, in Japan, Australia, everywhere. So this is, I think, good sign. In say, in 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 twentieth century, in early part of twentieth century, when nation declare war, then all the citizens of that concerned nation, without any question, proudly join war effort. Now, that kind of situation completely changed. So, this is a healthy sign. So, people, people's desire for peace is really genuine, very strong. Now, the peace not achieved uh, through violence, cannot achieve through prayer. So, what the Peace must produced by ourselves. Here, uh, peace does not mean no longer any uh, conflict, no longer any problem. No, not that case. So long human beings remain on this planet, some kind of conflict bound to happen. So the uh, peace means when not just absence, mere absence of uh, problem, but more than that, peace must come out of compassion. Uh, and then also, you see, the, uh, peace means uh, some disagreement, some conflict there. And then the, the very possible sort of I'll say open conflict, then deliberately restrain using violence uh, then through non-violent way, through peaceful resolution to seek ways and solving. So that is real meaning of peace or non-violence. So here, yeah, now in order to develop that, we need tremendous willpower and also fuller awareness. 
Now here, compassion. Firstly, bring inner peace. Through inner peace, the genuine world peace can achieve. Now that also, firstly, inner peace must develop within one individual, one single person. Then that peace creates in the atmosphere of one's own family. Through that way, 10 family, 100 family, 1,000 family, similar sort of, full of compassion, full of inner peace. Then, you see, the whole community can be more compassionate, compassionate as a community, really, truly peaceful community. Within that, some disagreement happened, just like between two husbands, because a husband and wife, or because uh, of the uh, among good friends. Uh, so try to solve that problem through dialogue, through talk. And with this, with sort of the, also the understanding of mutual respect, sort of mutual, mutual interest. interest. That's the way. I think that my previous sort of uh, the visit here, I talk external disarmament and also the, the external, dis external disarmament and internal disarmament. I think I talk. Uh, I remember, you see, people, which is really so the response was the very warmly. Uh, so at that time, I thought, oh, America, also, you see, they are not only producing weapon within your own country, but also selling a lot of weapon in outside. So at that time, I thought, oh, Many young people really feel, or really sort of, uh, enthusiastic about non-violence, about demilitarized and, and dis disarmament. I thought at that time, I felt like that. So here, you see, uh, internal disarmament. We must Kazuda, create internal disarmament through uh, promotion of compassion, yeah. Now, and that also, now, now that, that will develop a willpower, no matter how difficult it is. You see, avoid using violence, using force, but because of that, through peaceful way to solve the problem, one. And the second, we need, uh, that also, you see, helpful to see the reality more holistic. Because the compassionate mind, our mind more balanced, more calm. Then we can see the reality more clearly. When our mind becomes too much disturbed and agitated and some anger, then because of that uh, the emotion, our mental balance then disturb, no. disturb. As a result, we can't see the reality. One American uh, scientist, one time now, very old, I think when I met, uh, I think over 84 or something, I met Stockholm. Uh, uh, he also write one book, I think called uh, uh, Prison of anger or something like that. No. So, uh, our conversation, uh, he mentioned to me that when people lost uh, anger, uh, temper, uh, anger. temper, and uh, at that time, the object which you feel angry, now that object appears very negative. So, actually, that negativeness, 90% that negativeness is mental projection, not the reality. So that exactly, uh, the ancient Buddhist psychologist also you see mentioned like that. So therefore, in order to see the reality uh, clearly. Uh, clearly, our subjective, subject mind mental state. must be calm, open, unbiased. So here, compassion also important role. More compassionate mind, our mind, our, our mind become more.
law, so the balance, the, through that way we can see the reality better. So therefore, the, I feel compassion, compassionate attitude, here means unbiased compassion, uh, through training, the, that is really key factor for genuine peace, even within the family or even one individual's mind. There's an imbalanced way of thinking. Sometimes even suicide takes place. So therefore, the compassion is not just something religious, sacred sort of value, uh, value but this is something uh, very, very important uh, for uh, the, uh, happy life or healthy world, healthy community. So now here, the reason we can use our common experience, that means we, everybody here, come from one's own mother. The other day I mentioned my mother, illiterate, uh, just the villagers, villagers, so to say, uh, or say, farmer. a farmer, uh, uneducated, but very, very kind. So therefore, the, I always feel certain amount of my compassion, the real seed of that come from my mother. So we, everybody, I think especially when we were young, we very much appreciate others' affection. And eventually we grown up, then sometimes we get the feeling of I'm independent. Uh, I don't need anyone's sort of affection. Uh, affection. I can manage that kind of feeling. So that's strong. Uh, so in our life start uh, under the mother's affection. Then during our childhood, uh, childhood when we getting study, education, uh, with uh, mother or I mean parent or relative, especially from teacher, showing affection, showing genuine sense of responsibility the rest of the future of the student. Then the educate explanation or the lesson come from such person, I think, go very deep in our mind. So better education. I think everyone is to have the same experience. I think those lesson, I mean one lesson uh, from one very gentle, compassionate teacher Another lesson, another subject come from a teacher without these kind of affection. Ah. Feelings. Ah. Feelings. Uh, uh, ah. Feeling. Feel. Human feelings. <laughs> feeling, where? No. Feeling, I, don't, I don't know. Without this quality. I think uh, uh, at the classroom, yes, you have to sort of uh, study, you have to sort of uh, listen carefully, but may not go deep inside our mind. It's very clear. So then, uh, the medical, uh, when we were, when we ill, I think everybody have same experience, me too. When the, seeing some doctor with more smile and handling you with human feeling, then I feel, oh, now this doctor really carrying me and feel more confidence. If doctor come without any smile, and treat it like you, uh, treat it uh, you like machine. Mm, then sometimes feel, oh, this doctor may carry experiment on me. That kind of feeling <laughs> sometimes will happen, isn't it? So therefore, the uh, in every human sort of life, uh, life, uh, life, life, I think affection is very very important. Then at the time of death, dying person now. Now, no longer much useful affection, but still, the dying person surrounded a uh, close friend who really showing you affection. Then person feel more comfort, more peace.
peaceful. Uh, then more important, this body element very much uh, the close with calm mind, agitated mind, very bad for our health. Some scientists told me anger, fear, hatred, these are, when these often develop, often sort of occur, actually eating our immune system. Whereas more compassionate mind, more calm mind, strengthening our immune system. Um, one scientist presented a study that um, demonstrated how uh, many of these more toxic emotions even have uh, a physical impact on the reducing, I think, um, a particular substance referred to as tol telomerase, which is a part of the immune uh, system. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so, I can't remember, you see, that, that name, that word. My translator also not very sure. <laughs> <laughs> So in any way, you see, the one time in, I think, near New York, you see, one sort of uh, conference. Uh, uh, conference about medical thing and human health. And also recently in Dharamsala, this subject, you see, come. Came up now. So you see, even there is some picture, uh, something, I don't know now. Uh, you see, the more calm mind, more compassionate mind, you see, increasing that. The, at that time, you see, one, one doctor used to state that the uh, guinea pig or, or mice, say, one mice receiving licking from another mice, the, his body or his or her body element more healthy. Uh, more healthy. Healthy. More health. Healthy. No. Ah, more healthy. healthy. So these are, it's even animals, infection really makes differences their body element. So I have one, uh, one sort of recent sort of my experience. Is I went through surgery, what's it, a gallbladder. So within, uh, uh, actually, you see, the usual sort of, the, the surgery take, takes only 15, 20 minutes. My case, because, you see, the gallbladder Enlarged three times. Enlarged. And what called pus salve. There was a pus. No. Pus. No. So, uh, my surgery, my sur surgery. operation, take three hours. So, I had a nice time, three hours, completely, <laughs> completely sleep. Because <laughs> Indus, yeah, Anesthesia. Ah. Anesthesia. Uh, like that. So, <laughs> So, although the surgery become a little bit complicated, then later I told uh, my, my, my sort of surgeon, uh, you are so wonderful, really expert, so full of confidence. If I'm your case as a sort of surgeon, surgeon. To, carry, yeah. to carry the surgery, then uh, unexpected sort of complication phase, then... Uh, I may run away. <laughs> but you see, doctor, you see, find more complication, but full confidence, so they, because of the uh, yeah. operation, very successfully done. And then within uh, five days, fully recover, no problem. So one, you see, my, uh, the specialist, the surgeon, you see, described me, a uh, young patient. Oh, he loves this young patient. Then I told him, I'm not young, I'm over 73 years old. <laughs> then he told me, yes, I know your age, no, over 73, but your body element looks like six days. So he described me as a young patient. <laughs> so then I thought, oh, then also as I mentioned to doctor, I have nothing special, I have no meditation, nothing, but some kind of peace of mind, 
So that, I think, really makes differences about my body yeah. element. So therefore, everybody is taking care about our health, isn't it? Mm. So then, uh, taking care about our inner peace, that's one of the best medication for our good health, without pay much money, <laughs> isn't it? Mm. Sometimes it's a doctor or hospital, more sort of famous hospital, more expensive, isn't it? <laughs> so, so like that. One, I think in the in West, you see people loves the best and can say the uh, quickest, the quickest. Oh, best and quickest. Then I often you see at cheapest. <laughs> so you want something best, something color. quick, quick. Uh, then behind that, you also you see want more cheap thing. So therefore, the taking health care, taking care of health, uh, pay more attention our, about our inner value. That immense benefit. So, so these are the reasons uh, to get sort of conviction, peace of mind, or compassion mind, is something really good for me and for my family, for my community. And through that way, entire six billion human being. So our long-term goal should be whole six billion human being or entire humanity sh uh, should be a more compassionate humanity. Then a lot of man-made problem then disappear. That's very, very important. So that I want to tell you, I want to, to share with you, and if you want to, uh, to know further, then ask some of these, the medical scientists. Mm. Uh, of course, the, uh, not all medical scientists, but some medical scientists who really, you see, look more wider way, they have this, you see, this sort of knowledge and may advise you. So, as far as education is concerned, now really highly developed. As far as the technology, now something we are lacking, that is our inner peaceful quality, compassionate quality. Now please pay more attention about inner values. Then your life will become more meaningful, more peaceful, more happier one. That I want to tell you. So that's about my talk. So if you uh, agree, then think more, read more, and discuss among yourself more discussion. Then you get more sort of conviction. And then enthusiasm will develop. Just one sort of that talk, not sufficient, isn't it? And then those you see, people who haven't much sort of interest uh, I mean, these points, then not necessary. Uh, after, after this sort of talk finish, then forget it, no problem. <laughs> okay. So, uh, wherever I go, I always keep my mind uh, mainly two commitments. That is number one commitment on the level of human being. I'm one of the six billion human beings. Nothing special. So each of us have some moral responsibility to think well-being of the six billion human beings because we are part of that. The individual's future much depends on the rest of the six billion human beings' well-being. So therefore, from selfish viewpoint also, you see, we have to take care of the rest of the world. And the particularly, this moment, new reality, because of population and also some other reasons, much interconnected. So something happened far away, impact is reached here. So therefore, whole globe, something like one entity. So the other day I mentioned now our century-old concept, we and they. Sometimes it's useful, but sometimes it's really causing problems. 
So now our we, consider we, should extend entire humanity, part, part of, should be part of we, we humanity. Uh, we six billion human beings. So think more well-being of just the human being. That's why uh, on that level, I'm talking uh, promotion of human value in order to have happier days and happier sort of century like that. Then the second level, second commitment is I'm Buddhist monk. I'm, uh, generally speaking, one believer. So through my own practice, through my own experience, you see the various different major institutions have uh, so, the great potential to bring inner peace and some good things. Not only next life or next life or after death, but within this lifetime, there's some, when we're passing through difficult, desperate situation, the faith can help to sustain our hope and our uh, uh, our sort of, uh, we got inspiration like that. So, uh, so when we see conflict in the name of religion, then we feel really terrible. So therefore, the one of my effort is promotion of religious harmony. So in these two things, uh, of course, leadership uh, can do something, but mainly the promotion of human value and the promotion of religious harmony mainly depend on public. So therefore, each of you have sort of some sort of personality as the opportunity to make a contribution, better human society, happier human society, more compassionate human society, through improvement within your own family, within your own community, uh, individuals, like that. Then also the promotion of religious harmony. Uh, so, uh, I very much sort of uh, feel honored to share with you so, keep in your mind. That's all. Thank you. Now some questions. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Some questions. Question, question. Please sit, sit, sit down, sit down, sit down. Some questions. Um, three questions. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the internet has allowed for communication all over the world, yet why is it that one feels more and more isolated. People can't seem to connect with one another on a deeper and more profound level. I have not much experience about that. Internet. Not the internet. I have no experience with internet, surfing the internet. Uh, so some people say like that. You see, they, from distance, some some communication, but without meeting face to face. So sometimes you see it affects a feeling of because of the human human, human feeling contact. becoming less and less. So I don't know. So you you should think more if you if you really feel something uh, this is something lacking, then then what? Uh, what, what is the best way is it to counter that? Uh, you should do. I don't know. Mm -mm. Next question. <laughs> what is the most sensible way to stop nuclear plurification, proliferation, and the spread of other dangerous weapons? Yes, that my previous visit here also, as I mentioned, now. We should have very clear sort of vision uh, that whole world dimly dries. Uh, and that not come through prayer, uh, not come through just a statement, but step by step. So one way, firstly, uh, the, the, the stop, nuclear weapon, and then other biological weapons or some of these sort of awful destructive weapons should sort of stop. And 
Uh, and then also, I think, the, I think as the first step, selling armament to other people. Now recently, just some uh, news sort of appears. There in Mexico, a lot of people, you see, some area, you see a lot of people, you see, murdered, killing, but most weapons, you see, come from the United States. So these, you see, they're selling weapons. Uh, at one, one time, some Nobel laureate, you see, carrying some, start of some initiative. Uh, initiative. You see, there's some restriction, selling arms. Arms trade. Arms trade. So these are, I think, the uh, positive step. So that I think we uh, we should because of that we should continue. Uh, continue. Then another thing, uh, while we talking disarm, disarm, we must sort of uh, promote the spirit of dialogue because you see the problem there. Using force is supposed to solve a problem. So we must show the realistic human way of approach about conflict. That's a dialogue with full respect, full understanding about others' interests and respect other as a human brother, sisters. There's no point to neglect or to disregard the others' interest. If you simply concern one's own victory, our victory, their defeat, won't work. So as I mentioned earlier, we must keep the, the kind of concept, everyone is part of we. So therefore, the conflict within that must solve through talk, through dialogue. So that, I think, spirit must increase. So one way, disarmament. Uh, one way, promote the meaningful solution about our conflict. That is very important. And particularly, I feel, uh, many occasions I mentioned, I expressed, from kindergarten, some lesson, lesson of dialogue, so that school children, in their mind, the dialogue is something part of their mind, so that when they return their family, if parents some quarrel there, or even you see talking about divorce, then children can advise the parent, now this is not the right way, dialogue through dialogue. I think we can, we can change our mind through education. Uh, here we have truth. A propaganda, education through propaganda is no base, no truth. But these are education on the, on the base, because on the, on, on, the, basis of on the basis of truth, and scientifically, you see, uh, sort of clear sort of data, like that. So therefore, and one one sort of short story, one occasion in I think in, in near New York, again you see medical sort of, sort of discussion with scientists. One scientist is mentioned there. Those people who often use word I my mind like that, uh, they have greater chance of, greater risk of heart attack. <laughs> Why? Uh, of course, a person who often use these words, uh, in, in, that's a reflection of the, their sort of thinking. So in their mind, self centered self-cherishing is very much there. So they take maximum care about themselves. Then why? Heart attack, more risk of heart attack. Why? Here, I feel, my conclusion is, more self-centered attitude, uh, then our mind become more narrow. So more narrow and short-sighted, sort of, because of the view, even small, tiny problem appears unbearable. If our mind uh, not only think just oneself, but think the rest of the human being or the larger community, then even if it's a serious problem for oneself, and not that much significance. Yes, there are thousands of billions of human beings, you see, facing similar sort of problems. Then 
one's own problem is nothing special. So that I think really makes differences. So this one story. So therefore, please don't think oneself as a because world center way. Center Actually, it is world center, of course. <laughs> but uh, too much thinking oneself, I, 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 then uh, you may develop more health problem. So think more about well-being of other, then your health becoming more better, isn't it? That's my medicine. <laughs> um. Now, last question. Last, last question, last yes. Question. Uh, what advice would you give students graduating from college this year? Advice, eh? No. I don't know. <laughs> no. After sort of finishing your study, then you have to find jobs. <laughs> yeah. And also you have to, eventually you have to find your partner, isn't it? Uh, so a lot of problems there. <laughs> uh, so, one my suggestion, I think realistic suggestion is uh, you should not take for granted our life become easy or happy. You must prepare in your mind life is not easy. A lot of problems bound to happen. So right from the beginning, prepare that. Then actual difficulty comes and you can handle better. If you expect all oh, my life up to now, parent, oh, uh, because of the teachers, is it taking care? So my rest of my life will be uh, very easy. easy. Then some unexpected sort of difficulty phase, then you, you really uh, disturb much. So right from the beginning, you see, take, Usually, you see, we debat in the refugee community. Right from the beginning, one of our slogan is hope for the best, but prepare for worst. <laughs> so that must, you see, keep me, each, each person, I think, think that way. Then you already prepare the worst thing. So then no difficulties, no problem. <laughs> Isn't it? That my sort of, uh, that, so that maybe silly suggestion. But, but this is my feeling. So if you feel uh, some reasons, then think more like that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Could everybody please stay standing while we play the Tibetan national anthem?
Thank you. 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 No, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Very good. White, that's all right. White, oh, Kasa, white, 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 Kasa. White dress and white scarf and white heart. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 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 Oh, this is okay, okay, okay. Right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also got this one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.